So a lot of people think that the calendar life of a Tesla 18650 cells is rather short. What do you think? Like to take a guess? Well, today I have a really, really early Tesla cell with really low mileage. And I say, let's put it to the test. Right, all right. What does calendar life mean? What is, what is shelf life? A lot of people think that by leaving a cell, sort of like this early Tesla cell or this new Model S Tesla cells, if you just leave it out on the shelf there without using it, it will degrade. It has a shelf life. It has a calendar life degradation, right? A lot of people think that it is somewhat short, like 10 years, if whether you use this cell or not, it will degrade and a big percentage of its capacity and its power to take energy and then release it uh, is gonna be gone, right? So these things do have a shelf life. They do have a calendar life degradation, right? But I really do not know why people think it's so drastic. All my experience with batteries leads me to believe that it's actually not as much as most people think. So let's put it to the test. First, let's talk about these batteries. How is it that I have a really, really, really early Tesla battery with low miles, right? Because you have to have one that doesn't have a ton of life in them and cycles so that we can kind of gauge more accurately uh, how much of the degradation is due to the calendar life as opposed to cycle life, right? I just happen to be fortunate enough to have something that we can actually test. Okay, this came out of a 2009 Smart for Two car. Those early cars had batteries made by Tesla. When you look online at the Wikipedia, you realize that the Gen 2, which is where this came out of, uh, was a 2009 and 2010 uh, year models, right? And there was about 2,300 cars made. They were made kind of to test the waters to see if these new, you know, electric cars were gonna pan out or whatever. And so as a result of that, they were not production cars. They were converted out of the factory, but they weren't made for people to keep them. They were kind of on lease. So when we look at the specs online, um, Daimler advertised this car with a 14 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's what it was advertised, right? But we know that is wrong because years later, once we got our hands on one of them and we tested the capacity of these, each of the six modules that are included in the car uh, came out to 3.05 kilowatt hours. So you multiply that by six, so that equals 18.3 kilowatt hours on our test. So that means that the advertised capacity of that battery was conservative. They really didn't tell you the full size of the battery, right? So now, because we can't really take what was advertised, we can't take the spec of the factory or the manufacturer for the battery, what we can do is really look at what was available in 2008, 2009, when these batteries uh, had to be chosen for this one project, right? So these cells right here were most, most likely 2,600 milliamp. Now we can be wrong with that, but really there is no way of knowing since we don't have the spec sheet for this cell. This cell was manufactured uh, by Panasonic exclusively for Tesla. And so as a result of that, it doesn't have a model number and there are no spec sheets that were published. So we just have to take that as an estimation at around the time 2,600 milliamp cells were the most that you would could have in an 18 this package right here and so these were probably you know the newest latest technology uh with the most capacity 2600 milliamp hours all right so three years ago we got our hands on the first smart car and we knew that it had 5,000 miles on it right and so we took the modules, the battery modules off, and I tested, I put some in my bus and I tested them and they gave me 55 amp hours. And then one of the modules, we chose to destroy it. We wanted to see how hard it would be to remove the actual cells and reconfigure them to use them, you know, for different voltages and stuff. So we totally went crazy on this module, trying to destroy it, trying to get the cells out. And as you can tell, it was nearly impossible uh, we ran it over, we threw it from 30 feet up in the air, and we managed to remove some of these cells. I have about 10 of those cells here, and I actually have half of the module here with me. 
Uh, eventually, I do plan to make a project with it. But what we do know is that these cells have not been used since they came out from the car. And when they came out of the car, they had 5,000 miles. So we can find out how many cycles is 5,000 miles, right? Because look, all right, according to the Wikipedia article, uh, these cars would give you about 84 miles per charge, right? And so if you divide 5,000 miles by 84, that gives you 59.5. So about 60, 60 cycles is almost nothing. So it's like we can discard the, the use, the regular cycle use, and whatever degradation we get to see on this one today when we test it, we can attribute most of it, I mean 99.9% .9 or something, to being all due to shelf life. So what kind of life did these batteries see on this Smart for Two car? Well, it was an 18 kilowatt hour pack. The max load on these batteries were 30 kilowatts. You know, 30 divided by 18, it's a 1.66 C. So one and a half Cs. These batteries were actually get a pretty good life because especially since they were uh, liquid cooled. They, in those modules, they have a liquid cooling loop through it, which means that they were kept at a optimum temperature, right? And at least that was for five years, right? So the last three years, they haven't been temperature controlled because they've just been, and it's just a box that I put them on there in my garage and, you know, it gets up to 100 degrees there and it goes down. So some of this degradation might be due to the fact that, you know, they've probably been hot and they've probably been cold at night. I don't believe that that is going to play a big role. I think most of the degradation that we're going to see once we test this battery is going to do with shelf life or calendar life degradation, right? So let's test this thing. Wow, okay, so what does it mean? What does it mean? That's 2530? It's like 60 amp, 60 milliamp hours short of 2600 milliamps. I mean, what does it mean? I mean, it, it could only mean two things. Either these cells were not 2600 milliamps seven years, seven and a half years ago when they started, or the calendar life degradation is just a myth. It's one of those two. And because all of the data sheets, all of the, essentially all of the 18650 cells that have more than 2600 milliamps, 2700 milliamp hours, 28, 29, 3000 milliamp hours, those are all dated at, with the 2012 date, which means that they weren't available in late 2009 or early 2010 when these cells had to have been manufactured. I am gonna go with the conclusion that calendar degradation on lithium ion batteries, like these 18650s, is just a myth. People like to say that because they read it somewhere, but here I am, I'm testing. I tested it today with these batteries. And I'm telling you, it's virtually undetectable. I will mark these cells and we will check in three years when they officially have 10 years. You know, at the very least, we know where they were at three years ago. We know what they are today. In three years, we'll know what they're on six years, right? So we'll know where they're in six years and we'll be able to extrapolate that back. And so uh, I will be proven right that these things do not degrade over time just by sitting there doing nothing. They hardly degrade by cycling them. 3,000 cycles, we just showed that. These cells right here, 3,000 cycles. If you haven't seen that, go check out my video over here yesterday. I know there's gonna be people that are not gonna agree with me, but, well, I do encourage you. Put it in the comments. We'll see what the arguments are gonna be, right? All right, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, don't forget about Patreon. Sorry, I keep have to keep reminding you guys, but if I really wanna do this for real, then I have to be able to somehow justify the time that I that it takes for me to do all this stuff, right? I also want to take this opportunity to thank Jake Stevens for sending me some real Tesla cells, right? These should be the 3400, 3500, I don't know. We're about to test this. I'm gonna make another video and test these and 
I'll probably keep them in the shelf so that we can test them years later to see how they're holding or their capacity, right? You can check out Jake Stevens right here and you can get your own Tesla 18650 cells. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.